Hey everybody. Movie review time. We're back. And we are very excited to review a new movie that we went to the theaters to see. <laughs> Finally. The Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. What a journey it was. Yes. To walk into a movie theater and just feel normal. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yep. There's uh yes, we had to wear a mask and yes they had hand sanitizer everywhere. But mm-hmm. it was worth it. It was totally I'll take fine. it. Yeah. Especially for me, since I was shoving popcorn in my face and drinking. <laughs> I didn't have the mask on much during the movie yeah. anyway. So. Yeah, same. Oh, we're we supposed to keep them on during the movie? I thought we could take them off. Oh, well. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. well, there was, what, us and maybe five other people. So yeah. I think we were fine. Yeah, we were good. We were good. Yeah. But, yeah, if you haven't seen our last video that uh, Efren put together, magnificently well, by the way. Applause to you, sir. Um, We took a road trip to Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's about, what, hour, 20 minutes, hour, 30? Uh, I think about hour 30, uh, yeah. Yeah, to see Tenet, the movie we will be reviewing today. A cinematic journey indeed. And I know you guys have been hearing us talking about this and our excitement for it. And so Mm -hmm. we are glad to finally bring it in. And this will be, by the way, a non-spoiler review. We will not spoil it. even though I think even if we did spoil it, I think you guys would still be lost just by explaining it. So, Yeah, I, I tried to explain to my wife the movie um, when we got back, and she hadn't seen a trailer, and I, and I tried to explain it, and did, I, I, it did not, I did not do well. <laughs> she just like, I'm glad you had fun. That's what she said. I'm glad yeah. you had fun. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, don't worry. Like, we'll have to, like, you just have to see it, which is the best mm-hmm. thing about a movie. It's like, you just have to see it. You have to see it, yeah. Especially in theaters. Like, that's just the best way to describe it. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so Gary, like, I know you said it felt good in the theater. Any other thoughts Mm -hmm. on being back, even though we had to drive a little bit? Um, You know, I'm I'm ready for the day when we can just drive up the highway here and go to a movie. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, that was fun. Nice little road trip with with the fellas. And, uh, you know, and I don't want to, you know, I think – a movie like this, a, a big epic feel movie like this, I think it's worth driving for. Um, mm-hmm. I think I said on the way back, I'm not going to drive an hour or so, ride an hour or so to go see anything. But something like this, I I, I, I was glad we did it, and it was mm-hmm. it was cool, and it was nice to be in that atmosphere again, yeah. you know. And um, yeah, it was it was it, it felt normal, <laughs> yes, <laughs> which I I desperately need these days. Yeah, it felt nice, you know, walking in, smell of popcorn and beverages, mm-hmm. and you know this. Mm-hmm. everything about it and then of course just being back uh, for a movie that you have to experience in the theater and mm-hmm. uh, it was it was just great to be back and i can't wait i did look up it looked like theaters are planning you know mm-hmm. assuming the governor doesn't change his mind planning to open mm-hmm. october 2nd which, okay which which would be in line with uh wonder woman coming out so I there think we go at okay. least in our area that's that's the date they're planning for so i'm looking forward to that and hopefully it happens yeah yeah let's see that'd be great That'd be great. Yeah. So uh, moving right into this review. And uh, so initial thoughts on Tenet, Gary, my man. What you got? Okay. Initial thoughts. uh, Leaving the movie theater. Um, So, uh, wow. I don't even know where to begin, honestly. Um, This movie packs a lot. It does. Mm -hmm. Um, It is definitely a Christopher Nolan movie. And you you realize it right off the bat. Um, I let, you know. It did everything a movie needed to do for me. It kept me thinking. It kept me wondering what was going to happen next, and it kept me interested. Um, I was never bored. Mm-hmm. And for a two-and-a-half-hour movie, I think that says a lot. Um, it was very interesting. It was paced very well. And uh, initial thoughts leaving the theater, I was like, I liked that a lot. I'm glad we drove to see it. Um, and a few days later, after watching other people's reviews and um, – uh, breakdowns and theories. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I, I it's one that I cannot wait to revisit. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, yeah, I mean, it covered all the bases for me. Um, and uh, yeah, it was yeah. good. Yeah, I know my initial thoughts. I decided to stay away from other people's reviews uh, just mm-hmm. so I can not have my thoughts clouded by what other people say and you know yeah. other smarter critics and stuff have to say. About <laughs> it. Uh, no. I know for me, uh, coming out of this, like this was the Christopher Nolan movies are usually like really, really good. Right. But Mm -hmm. I don't know if fun would be something that I would say about every single movie. Yeah. To me, this movie was 
was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, Christopher Nolan, you know, technically, cinematically, all that kind of stuff. Like he's phenomenal. This, that's why we were looking forward to this movie so much. Um, but it was like it was just to me, it was it was a great Christopher Nolan type of movie with the seriousness mm -hmm. and like you said, get you thinking and mm -hmm. trying to like really mess with your mind a little bit. But it was also just a lot of fun. And that's what I really liked about it, because there are sometimes like with his movies that it's just like, man, like this just isn't very fun. I mean, it's good, mm -hmm. but it isn't like it isn't very fun. And it, but this yeah. one was and I liked it. And even days later, I'm just like, I, I can't wait to go back. Like, I yeah. want to go back, like, right now, honestly, and, like, go see mm -hmm. it. Like, I want to go back and, and watch it again, see if I can notice anything different, mm -hmm. you know, the second time around. What did I miss the first time? Things like that. Um, so, yeah, so I was, I was very pleased with it, and I thought that um, it lived up to my expectations. Yeah, same. And I, and I think rewatchable is probably the best mm -hmm. word I can use to describe this. Is that one word or two? I don't know. But yeah. – um, I want to see that we, where we went was great, but it wasn't, we didn't have an IMAX, which was fine, but I want to see this in IMAX, you know, cause we, we even had like the, well, like you can tell he shot this in IMAX yeah. and this will be a movie people talk about for a while. It's like, did you catch this the first time? I never noticed this, you know, and it's just mm -hmm. the way it's put together. Um, it's very rewatchable. And, uh, and you're right. The trailer didn't do justice to how much fun it actually is. It actually has some yeah. pretty interesting, fun dialogue, uh, with Pattinson and uh, is it uh, uh, John David Washington? Yep. Um, he had some pretty funny one-liners actually when he's interacting with people. Yes. Like when he starts to realize what is going on, I was like, yeah, I get kind of like, okay, it's pretty hilarious, you know, mm -hmm. some of the stuff he was saying. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where uh, I just thought like, because honestly, like, I mean, I had no idea who this guy was until I saw him mm -hmm. in the trailer. Um, you know, like, and I just thought, he, and I just thought it was. You know, it, like you said, it was a lot of fun, like his interactions and stuff. It's like you can tell mm -hmm. he's being serious, but he's also still in, very much an agent, an undercover mm -hmm. agent trying to figure stuff mm -hmm. out. And um, so I just, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it was, it was just, it was just a lot of fun. Like it reminded me, it did, it did remind me a lot of Inception, how like this mm -hmm. is serious and stuff like that. But it was just a fun movie to watch mm -hmm. and watch it unfold. And even if you knew, you know, if, even if you knew or you didn't know what was going on, you still had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And so that's, that's why I just, I just yeah. liked it. I thought it was just yeah. a great job with it. And this movie is is put together very differently, just like, like Christopher Nolan tend to tends to do sometimes. Um, and I think that in there are some moments where you really have to kind of pay attention, and it can seem a little confusing. I think I was a little bit more confused than you were at times. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing that helped me was there's a part at the beginning. I won't spoil anything, but you kind of see the over the the giant picture of things, mm -hmm. and if you grasp onto that all the other details will kind of work its way out in the movie. Yeah. And it's not like a, uh, you know, part, part, middle, you know, third act, third act. It's all kind of like, you know, yeah. jumbled up together a little bit, which was very interesting, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, it was very much like, it was like the first half of the movie, or maybe I guess the first two acts, I guess, is like you're seeing, you're seeing it, but you're seeing also the third act happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's like, and then when the third act goes around, you see it. And so it's just, and like, again, I don't want to say too much, but it's just yeah. the way he made this movie was great because mm -hmm. it, it is very much thinking a different way of making movies. Like I know we mm -hmm. talked about before of how Dunkirk, like instead mm -hmm. of just showing us stuff um, like linear or showing us stuff like here's the main thing that happened and then here's everything mm -hmm. coming in, he showed us all of it at the same time. Yeah. You know, and then it was just yeah. kind of like, but it was different and mm -hmm. you had to try to keep up. So it was just, I just really appreciated a different take on this mm -hmm. type of story, which yeah. you, again, you have to watch it to figure out what kind mm -hmm. of story we're talking about. But yeah, I thought yeah. it was, I thought it was great. And I do also think that, and I don't mean this as a knock to anyone who may think this way, the way it's structured may not be for everyone. I think we were talking about that on the way out. I think they're um, like, I love her to death. My wife, I, I think this movie would just like, frustrator <laughs> you know and um and like other people but and that's not a knock on anybody it's just it's just put together very differently mm -hmm. um which I, I appreciated it at one point denzel who was with us you guys remember our good buddy denzel from the star wars episode yeah. uh, he leaned over to me he said do you have any idea what is going on and i was like i think so <laughs> i was like yeah. 10 minutes in I was, <laughs> I was like i see the big picture yep. but i'm working out all the details still <laughs> yeah you know which in case in point like we said it just it's going to take more viewings and and that's that's not a bad thing i think no no not at all and, and yeah. i like and i like movies that 
that they do that to where it's like, I need mm-hmm. to go back a second time mm-hmm. to really digest this. Like, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And we don't have a lot I, of those. So. I was a little worried going into it that it was going to be all visual mm-hmm. and not enough attention to detail with characters and dialogue and their development. But I didn't think it, I think it was a good mixture of both. Yeah. You know, because I heard some people say that. I watched some non-spoiler reviews just because I can't help myself, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, some people had said that. They said that the characters kind of take a back seat to the filming structure and all mm-hmm. that. But I didn't I – didn't, I left – I was like, I didn't get that from it at all. I thought the characters yeah. were very, you know, yeah. I thought they were developed well. And that's what I was worried about watching other people's reviews is I was afraid mm-hmm. that, like, there was probably a lot of stuff they missed. Not that like mm-hmm. I'm smarter or better than any of them. I just know mm-hmm. I notice different things than most people do. And mm-hmm. so it's just like maybe they just missed out on some things. And mm-hmm. I was just like, I didn't want to hear them like, da da da. I'm like, eh. Uh. Yeah. Because yeah. like you said, yeah. like, de- like the characters, I thought they did great with the characters. Mm-hmm. And they, like they, throughout the movie, you might have gotten lost and you might wonder why this mm-hmm. person here. But by the end of it, it wraps it all mm-hmm. up. And they're like, oh, yeah. now that all makes sense. Yeah. And so that's yeah. why it's like, oh, yeah, plenty of character development Mm -hmm. you just don't get it all to the end yeah and that's the thing about i've always appreciated about christopher nolan and i haven't liked everything he's done but he doesn't spoon spoon feed you he just he puts it out there and says you know figure it out somehow (laughs) you know and this movie was definitely a here it is figure it out (laughs) (laughs) you know so uh but yes so and uh and, and i thought that was great and and i thought um you know like i said earlier like this guy right here um, John David Washington. Mm-hmm. I had no idea who he was. Dear yeah. heavens, I thought he did great in this movie. Oh yeah, and like he yeah. he is he in this movie he showed that like and it with any future movie he can carry it. Oh yeah, like he can be the star. He can carry this movie on his own because he pretty much mm-hmm. did in this movie. Like mm-hmm. this movie really is him figuring everything out. Mm-hmm. And then the yep. supporting characters really did feel like supporting mm-hmm. characters. Like they were there mm-hmm. to support his story and help him mm-hmm. along and figuring out what the stuff he needs to figure out. And I thought he did a great job. Yeah, I thought he did great. This is yeah, this is his story. This is his movie, and we're from the get go. We are on the ride with him, and he's bringing people in and out. And I thought it was casted very well. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Robert Pattinson. You know, mm-hmm. I got I've, I've shared my issues with him, but I thought he was very good in this movie. I don't know the lady's name that was in the movie, but I thought she was really good. I really felt mm-hmm. for her character many times yeah. uh, for what she was going through. And the guy that played, I guess, the bad guy <laughs> in this movie was uh, he was I mean, it was they everybody did really well. And we also had a cameo from Michael Caine, you know, yes. in this movie, as as most Nolan movies have, <laughs> you know, yes. Alfred himself, He's the man. as they should. Yeah. I like to think that was Alfred. He just got into this stuff after, uh, yeah. you know, he's just that he's there across from that cafe. He saw Bruce Wayne and yeah. <laughs> so. And then he's dealing with yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, this, this guy's a star. In the, he, he's going to be, he's going to be big. He's, he's really yeah. good. Yeah. Maybe he's done indie stuff, which, you know, you and I never watch really. Um, yeah, no. But I don't know. Like, I don't know what else he's done. Yeah. But in this, he was he, phenomenal. And if he doesn't get more gigs after this, that would be mm-hmm. a travesty. Yeah, he did a couple things. I went on his IMDb. It said that you may know him from the Book of Eli, but I don't remember him in that movie. Um, mm-hmm. He did that show, that HBO show with The Rock, um, which I you know haven't seen right. in um, a much couple episodes. But you know, but uh, but this was like the first big breakout role for him that gotcha. that I've seen him in at least. So yeah, and that was me. Yeah. And I just thought he did great. And then mm-hmm. you know you brought up you know Sir Sir uh, Robert Pattinson. Mm-hmm. I mean, even look at that picture. Mm-hmm. He looks awesome. Yeah, like yeah, in that yeah. shot. And it was okay. just like, and I and I got this shot for a reason. But I just mm-hmm. re- I just really appreciate it because I'm one of the many normal folks who the last mm-hmm. time we saw him <laughs> was in Twilight. Yeah, and it yeah. was just like, are you serious? Yeah. And, uh, and it was, and he's like, and like Christopher. And I will say when I saw that Christopher Nolan had him in this movie, I'm like, all right, Christopher Nolan doesn't just cast anybody. No, he like, doesn't. He's, he's yeah. got to believe in him. So I'm like, okay, it much like. You mm-hmm. know, Heath Ledger with the Joker. It was like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know about mm-hmm. this, but it's Nolan, so mm-hmm. we're going to give it a shot. And, of yep. course, Nolan is right like he usually is. And yeah. He, it, he did great. Yeah, he, he did. Yeah, he did great in this movie. And there's a part continuing my trend of mentioning either Batman or Jaws in every single one of my vid- our videos. Yeah. Um, there's a scene in this movie where he's walking through, and I'm like, that's Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Yep. You know, I was like, yep, okay, he's going to do great. Yeah. That's Bruce Wayne. And that's why, that's why I was trying to find mm-hmm. that sh- that, that mm-hmm. still for you. But that's mm-hmm. why I also picked this one because this one yeah, is like, 
This yeah. this very much looks like like that is the face of Batman mm-hmm. as Bruce Wayne getting yep. mad at something, getting ready yep. to like you know. So that's why I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I like this picture. Yeah, um, it's like I, I see is. what Matt Reeves sees. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I see it. I see it now because that's the thing. It's uh-huh. like guys like us, we haven't seen him. And I mean, I know mm-hmm. other people who are much more into movies and see a lot more than we do. They have mm-hmm. said like, dude, he's done some stuff. He's a great actor, and we're like, okay, yeah. but have, so this was our time to see it. And it's like, yep, that's Batman. Yeah. Like they want to make a and, trilogy, whatever. He's the new Batman. I'm good. Yep. And to be fair, like some of the movies he's done that people say are really good, like he did this one movie that's on Netflix, and I wanted to watch it to see it, but I going back to a previous episode, it's got like 200 f words in it, yeah. and uh, and I was like, see that that's why. And I'm not saying it's necessarily him, but those are the type of movies he's done after Twilight, probably trying to shed that image of yeah. you know, whatever his name was, the vampire guy. Yeah, whatever. Um, you know, but uh, but this was a yeah, this yeah, he's. Yeah. It was good great. to see him back in a big. It was good to see him mm-hmm. in a big blockbuster, as mm-hmm. not that vampire. And so, yes. like, so, so normal yes. people like us can just be like, okay, we're seeing, yep, like what this dude mm-hmm. can do. And then mm-hmm. with it being in this movie, it was like, oh man, this is like the perfect movie to come. Not, not, not like those of us are already excited from the trailer of what we saw mm-hmm. in Batman, but mm-hmm. now it's like, all right, I'm a fan of this dude as an actor now. Yes, and yep. I think like you know, put Batman away as an actor. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this dude can act. So yep. if, there, if he's gonna be in more stuff, like especially stuff mm-hmm. like this, like I'm down. Like, yep. like he, he to me he has shed that nonsense, just like Heath Ledger shed the jo- the stuff nonsense before or after mm-hmm. Joker. I'm like, that's mm-hmm. where I'm at with this guy. I'm like, okay, this dude can yep. act. I'm good with it. Same, guy. same. Yep. So after one viewing, how do you feel? I mean, we are obviously Christopher Nolan fans. We don't love everything he's done, but where do you think oh, after just one viewing, where does this measure up? Like, where does this? How does this compare to other Nolan movies to you? Um, I think, honestly, I think it's right up there with with most of them. Like, I, I mean, I would honestly, I would stick it uh, pretty close to up there with Inception. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, because like, because <clears throat> to be fair, I kind of see the Nolan Dark Knight trilogy as like its own thing for some. Yeah, reason. you like, can't really I, compare. I I, so I don't really stick that in the in the brand of Nolan movies. So when mm-hmm. I think of Nolan movies, I think of like The Prestige, Memento, mm-hmm. Insomnia. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Inception, now this, like this is, the, you know, Interstellar. That's the stuff when I think of Nolan movies, Dunkirk. That's what I think of mm-hmm. when I think of Nolan movies. And, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, and for me, like, I, like I would put it, like I said, like to me, honestly, like my top two favorite, my favorite is probably Prestige mm-hmm. uh, of, of all of them. And then my second favorite would be, would be uh, Inception. And then I would put mm-hmm. Tenet right there. Uh, yeah. You know, kind of, kind of like, you know, probably not his his best work, but it, it's pretty darn oh. close in that top tier. Yeah, like, it, like yeah. it's probably like floating in between tier one, tier two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I would do um, Inception. Like, I didn't leave the theater as blown away as I did mm-hmm. with Inception with this, but I was it was close. Um, I would do Inception, um, probably Prestige, and then this. Um, then outside of the Dark Knight movies, like I agree that that being a separate thing, but like all those movies have like something very, especially like you got like Interstellar, mm-hmm. which I didn't really care for. Um, yeah. which I told one of the students here, uh, there's a student here at the crossing wants me to rewatch it. Someone need to rewatch it. I told her I would. Mm-hmm. Um, but like in Interstellar, this and uh, Memento stuff like that. Um, he in Inception, he is like. What was it you said before the show? It was like time manipulation. Like he's obsessed yeah. with the idea of time. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like those are all like intertwined together. Not that they're, you know, connected or anything, but yeah. um, like you kind of see them all kind of his yeah. time movies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but you, you do but, see that he likes to play with that idea of, mm-hmm. of time and what has happened. Reality. Because, yeah, because yeah. Interstellar deals with mm-hmm. some of that time stuff. This deals with that. Mm-hmm. Inception mm-hmm. deals with time, but in, in dreams. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's a little bit different. Prestige mm-hmm. deals with timing of the tr- mm-hmm. of the trick and, or the illusion and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you do see that he likes a lot of time stuff. Memento, he had to remember things in mm-hmm. time and things are backwards and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So you do see that that thread there. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's where I put it. Like it's probably like honestly high end tier two. <laughs> like yeah, like very close. Like trying to get into it's, that tier one. It's but very th- much up there. And that might change if after a second viewing. So we'll see. Hmm. Yeah. And I will say if you're, you know, I, I highly recommend seeing this in the theater. If you, if you want to see it, like definitely check it out. Yeah. See the way um, it was meant to be seen. Mm-hmm. Definitely do it in the theater. And if you can get to mm-hmm. an IMAX, do it like, yeah, because that's obviously the best, the, the way he wanted it to be seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. 
I wonder if we see it yeah. in IMAX if we'll notice more. Just because yeah. I wonder if like certain things were cut off in our theater that didn't like, yeah. fit our theater right. You know, I don't know. I yeah, don't... maybe. You never know. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, um, definitely seeing it that way. I, that's I really hope it open our theaters open up soon and we can go check it out on IMAX. You know. Yes. I'm glad I saw it, but I, I definitely want to see it on the biggest screen possible. Yes, so, absolutely. Thank you, know. Gus. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, <sorry>. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, um, so I know we've talked any more we want to add. I mean, we said a lot of good things about it already. Any more we want to add to the good? I mean, pretty much all we said, you know, the casting, the character development, the visuals, the story, the way it was paced. It was was a lot of good to this. Yeah. There's a lot of good. I thought the story was great. Hard to follow at times, which we'll get into Mm -hmm. in the bad in Mm -hmm. a second. But, Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that, but the thing I thought was really cool too, was like 96% of this had no CGI, it's actual mm-hmm. stunts and stuff like that. So that makes it, knowing that makes it even more amazing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The stuff that they did with it. So I thought it was really cool. And I was able to see some yeah. behind the scenes stuff later on some of the fight scenes and how they did them backwards so they could it's actually crazy. film it. It just, it's, it's just crazy. great. So the yeah, attention to detail is just, yeah. And apparently this has been like his passion project for a long time. Yeah. Like apparently he's been working on this script for like seven plus years. Wow. You know? And you when, and you watch the movie and you can be like, all right, you can kind of tell. <laughs> yeah, the thought you know, process into it. The thought process into yeah. it. So, so all yeah. right. So the bad, Gary. Any bad <laughs> that you have? Okay. Well, my only bad mm-hmm. is, and I'm not going to complain about the structure because that's how he made the movie. Nope, I'm fine with that. I feel like I know it's what gonna you're going to say. <laughs> it's going to make me rewatch it. He's got to turn the music down, man. I couldn't <laughs> hear what they were saying. I feel like an, um, this is old man Gary coming on, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, seriously, there were times in, I thought it might be our theater, but I watched some other reviews. This has been a lot of people's complaint with this movie. There, there are times you cannot, it's really, really hard to hear the dialogue. Yeah. And it's not like things in passing, like there's one scene where you need to hear what they're saying mm. and like the music's just like overpowering all of it. Yeah. And, um, and that drove me insane because <laughs> yeah. I'm very much, you know, I'm very much a guy that needs, I'll be honest, I'm not the smartest guy, you know, um, I need that dialogue. I need it, especially yeah. in a movie like this. Um, so that's probably the only bad really. I mean, yeah. And there yeah. was a couple scenes that drug on a little bit, especially towards the end. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but there was one scene where you kind of know where it's going and it just goes, and I know why, but it's just like, okay, can we, can we get to it now? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but that's really it. Yeah. Just turn the music down, Christopher, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't no, hear no, myself that, think. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's kind of been the staple of Nolan is, mm-hmm. man, like his his score, that like it always ends up being loud. So mm-hmm. stinking loud. And it's hard to hear the dialogue sometimes. And, and that was my complaint. Like, it seriously it was. It's like, okay, I can't hear anything. And then you just wait till it's done. And then you have to try to play catch up on, okay, mm-hmm. he's saying this, this. Okay, so he must have said that. Okay, that's where it's going. And mm-hmm. it makes you, and it makes you like really, because even because it's, it's not like one of those things like okay, just focus and pay attention, you'll be able to hear it. Like no, like mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Our th- I remember our theater was like the seats were rattling because yeah. the bass was just wah, 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 wah. like yeah. the Interstellar like wah, yeah, wah, and it was just yeah, uh, like you could between the rattling and the loudness, like you just couldn't mm-hmm. hear. It. And there was like you said during very pivotal points, it's mm-hmm. like we need to hear what they're saying so we know what's mm-hmm. going on. Um, yeah, and that, and that, that rattling that was, that was yeah. The seats rattling and all that, that's fine during action scenes or like a montage, but mm-hmm. like when someone's talking, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. what? <laughs> you know, yeah. there was one point my chest hurt. Like I felt it <laughs> in my chest, you know, it's just yeah. like, is this it? Am I, am I is this it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, uh, I agree. That'd yeah, be the only thing. That'd be the only thing for <laughs> me. Um, cause at yeah. least for me, like the scenes that, I mean, I know which ones you're talking about, like that drug on a little bit, mm-hmm. at least for me, at least it was fun to watch it un- like unfold. You yeah, because like it was, when, yeah. when stuff like drags on and it it just it could get really bad really quick. But at least it was fun mm-hmm. to watch it unfold. So that's mm-hmm. where I'm like, hey, I'll give it a pass. You know? And the the scene that we're talking that I'm talking about is like the good about it was there was other stuff going on. It kept cutting to, mm-hmm. but like I, I guess I was it was just like all right, just a, l- a little bit long, a little bit long. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But so, I couldn't hear what they were saying anyway, so I might as well have a long scene. <laughs> so, yeah. but uh, that's really it. Yeah. So uh, on the pastor, I know for me, uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in this, obviously. But mm-hmm. I think the main thing that I kind of that I kind of clinged on to that I thought was really cool was um, was the idea of like 
like it already happened. Like, like mm-hmm. you, you had to stop. Like they kept saying, you have to stop thinking of time as linear. Like, mm-hmm. And they were just like, it's already happened. It's been done. You just have to, you just have to do it. Like you just have to go through it. And I know, you know, from a pastor standpoint, I thought it was really cool because it was kind of like, you know, that's kind of like where God is. Like he's outside of time. Like he doesn't look at time as linear. Like it's just, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, so like he knows what's going to happen. And so we just got to like, we, we just got to do what we got to do. We got to stop worrying about, because that's the mm-hmm. thing, like, like the, you know, uh, tenant because i mean the, mm-hmm. the protagonist i mean that's his name that's what they call mm-hmm. him you mm-hmm. know he's just so worried about wait what's happening now now what's happening next like what am i supposed mm-hmm. to do and it's like mm-hmm. dude just do no, what you, you do have to do like yeah. just do it and uh you know stop worrying about what's next or what's going to happen or what has happened just just mm-hmm. focus on what you can do right now mm-hmm. and i thought that was i thought that was really cool like i said from that past perspective of like because mm-hmm. that's, that's how it is with our you know with our walk with christ like just mm-hmm. just do just do what we can do right now. Don't worry about anything mm-hmm. else. And I thought that was really yep. cool. And the things we worry about um, on that note, like with the movie also, like the things he was worried about, it, 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 are, it, been, it was one out of his, his control, but people were already working on his side mm-hmm. on another thing. You know, it's like on that same thought, it's like the, Christ has already done He's already won it for us, you know. He's taking care of all the details. We're just along for the ride, doing what we right. can for him, and uh, and that was very much the protagonist. And you kind of realize, like he's, you know, <laughs> along yeah. for the ride. Might as well just do it. Yeah. Affect only what you can control. That yeah, that's very well put. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I like what you just said there too. It's like he had no idea these people already mm-hmm. were on his side, like working with mm-hmm. him. Like he, like he was struggling to figure out who do I trust, mm-hmm. know, who's telling me the truth, who's lying, and he had no mm-hmm. idea that the majority of the people they were already on his side and working mm-hmm. for him. And it's just like, mm-hmm. you know, so I thought that was really cool how oftentimes we don't realize who's actually on our side. We're, we're trying to figure mm-hmm. out who can I trust, you know, mm-hmm. who, who can I bring in my circle? And it's like, dude, all these people are already working for us. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so I thought yeah. that was cool too. And I like yeah. that you brought yeah. that up because I forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So really good takeaway there. Yeah. And so, so from the dad perspective, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, it'd be a while for my kids to watch this movie because it'd be too loud for them to go to sleep. <laughs> They'll be like, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, it was. I mean, there was there was definitely uh, as a father some things in this movie that I took away from that you know you see there's some parents in this movie the things they struggle with, um, good and bad, and uh, for the most part. And this is the thing I like about Christopher Nolan. I mean, he'll have a little bit of language, a little bit of violence, but I mean, you know, nothing too uh over the top yeah nothing too over the top yeah, you know yeah. um but I'll, I'll add this to the nolan movies i'd love to, keep my, to watch my kids when they're teenagers someday you yeah. know yeah but um yeah yeah there is an underlying story with uh about parenthood in this movie and, and you really you start to feel for uh one of the characters yes you know yeah yeah you do so. and yeah and it and it is it's just like I mean, like you, like this will be one that kids will watch, you know, when they're teenagers, when they're mm-hmm. age appropriate to watch it so they can actually watch it. You know, I mean, PG-13 mm-hmm. for a reason, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on and, you know, violence or whatever, nothing over the top. But, yeah. I mean, you know, when it's the, it's good for them to watch and hopefully see what they take away and mm-hmm. just enjoy it. So mm-hmm. um, definitely not a bring all the family around if you have youngins. Yeah. Like, no, no need yeah. for that. But, no, you know, no. maybe maybe a good family night when everyone's a teenager. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, a little double feature Inception tenant. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Blow everybody's mind. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought this was a. Uh, I just had this thought. This was a a good mixture of a spy movie mixed with sci-fi, mixed with a little bit of war element. Mm, yeah, I just had that little. It's like covers yeah. all the bases. You know. Yep, it did. Thought it was good. So, so getting into our Hail Marys now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, man, I've been going back and forth, honestly. Yeah. Uh, on, on what to give this because it's like mm-hmm. I really don't have a whole lot of complaints but mm-hmm. I didn't you know like we said earlier I didn't feel like it was you know as good as other movies of his and I don't know I've been struggling back and forth and uh, I don't know Gary so where do you wh- have you been struggling or do you know well, like a little bit so there are aspects of this movie I wish we could do like <laughs> But I don't want – like, if we did visuals, I'd say five. If we did, you know, casting, I'd say five. But right. I think all in all, um, I'm going to go four mm-hmm. on this. Um, and and I don't think that's a bad thing. There's just 
I didn't. I, I went away thinking I really, really like that movie. I'll buy it on Blu-ray. I'll rewatch it, but I didn't get the masterpiece feel right. for it. Um, but uh, so I just feel like you know I, I feel I feel you know secure in that four rating. I feel yeah. like I have to defend myself, you <laughs> know, because it was such a well-made movie, you know. But like I said, I didn't have that like just mind-blowing amazement that i did with inception like it's a little bit underneath there so mm-hmm. if inception's a five i put this as a four mm-hmm. yeah that and, makes sense and, yeah and i think that's because i went back and forth and i'm just like man mm-hmm. i don't know because it's like this movie's just so good but mm-hmm. is it masterpiece level and i feel like you know sometimes with masterpieces like you see you like it showed you something new it showed mm-hmm. you something different it, or it did something different and there was a lot of stuff in this that was different like mm-hmm. you know we can't spoil it but just the whole time manipulation and what they did mm-hmm. with time. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like that was a new fresh take on the topic of time, I guess is the best mm-hmm. way to say it. Um, and I thought that was a fresh take and I thought that was great in the action, everything, the way they filmed it, the way they made it, like you could see like stuff went backwards and mm-hmm. it was just like, Oh, like this is just so, so good. Then of course I have the issues of the dialogue and stuff. And sometimes yeah. some things did drag on. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I was very entertained and it was fun. So it's like I was going mm-hmm. back and forth. But with my statement earlier of, you know, it's not quite top tier Nolan movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mm-hmm. think that's where I fall with you, where I just stick at yeah. four. Really, really, like, really great movie, especially with, with our rating system. You know, oh, we're yeah. saying four. Four is a great movie. Oh, yeah. And it is a great yeah. movie. It just it just doesn't quite. It's like four is a really great movie. You have to go watch it. Go see it. Mm-hmm. But fifth mm-hmm. is like, dude, this is something like. Like if yeah. you have to see it, you have to own it. You have to, mm-hmm. you know, it's something that should be cherished for years and everyone should mm-hmm. watch for the history of cinema. And mm-hmm. like, and that, that just like tenant didn't make that kind of level for him. Like this isn't something that yeah. like we have to show people for the history of cinema and what cinema can do. Like it just didn't do yeah. that. Um, it was almost as good as Encino man. Almost at oh that my level. Gosh. Your head <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, folks and, and folks i'll just give you a heads up what we just talked about trying to rate this movie yes the answer is yes this is the type of type of stuff we stress about <laughs> yes, <laughs> how yeah. to rate a great movie <laughs> you know because <Yeah>. just <laughs> now that this being said i don't know what our policy is about going back and changing ratings maybe we see this in imax maybe it gets bumped up to a five you know yeah, maybe maybe some reviewings maybe we do it but i i feel pretty good about yeah. that four on my yes. end yes yeah i do um, too and i think like if we did change the rating we probably just have to do a special show to explain ourselves mm-hmm. so like yeah you know, it'll be done that way um mm-hmm. but yeah but it's just you know because when i think of when i think of the latest masterpiece i saw which is ford versus ferrari mm-hmm. like even then it's like you know that didn't have all the crazy action and stuff but like just yeah. what it did in the story it told it's like dude this is mm-hmm. a masterpiece like this that's is such great. a great movie yeah, it, it's just so such good. Such a great movie. And yeah. and that's where it's like, this didn't meet that. Because I look at Inception, I think that's a masterpiece. I think of Prestige, mm-hmm. that's a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking of Nolan movies. And I'm like, like these are movies like I feel like people have to see mm-hmm. to really experience like storytelling and visuals and just everything. Yeah. And this one, it's like, yeah, the storytelling's great. The visuals are great. But it was just, I don't know, like you said, it just didn't feel yeah. like a brand new masterpiece really yeah. great just not a masterpiece mm-hmm. yeah yeah same but go out and see it definitely check it out yeah definitely check mm-hmm. it out definitely worth your time if you know if you're like hey my theater made it 10 bucks and upped it worth it like mm-hmm. you know they're trying to make money back and stuff it was yeah it really is it really is a great nolan movie um and, and surpasses many others um mm-hmm. you know because there are some nolan movies i'm just like this movie just wasn't good at all um, i thought it was a lot better than interstellar Oh yeah, see, see, that's one. And, I'm just like, I don't like Interstellar. Yeah. Period. I've um, only seen it once, and there's a reason for that. But I probably, like I said, I'll watch it again soon, probably. Yeah. But I, yeah. I definitely thought it was better than that. Yeah, I saw that one twice, and I just didn't. Because here, here yeah. was the problem, and it was, and I had the same, and I thought this was going to happen with Tenet. But here's the problem with Interstellar: within the first 15 minutes, I knew exactly what was happening. Mm. I figured out the story in the first 15 minutes, and then I mm-hmm. had to sit through this slow. It is very sludge slow. for yeah. the next two and a half hours, and I was like, well, "Oh my gosh, this Interstellar is so terrible." But it, I don't go on a that. tangent. I don't want to go on a tangent, but Interstellar is Christopher Nolan trying to be Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick, yeah. he's trying, that's him trying to make two thousand one a space odyssey, in my opinion. Yeah. And where that, I mean, I don't want to get on a tangent about that, but that—that's how I saw it. I was like, "Oh, he's just trying to make a big space opera," and yeah. it's just like. 
all right, get on with it. Yeah. And that's where I think Tennant shines. Yeah. I feel like he went yeah. back to being himself mm-hmm. with, with this anyways. And it was just mm-hmm. like, all right, this is good. I mean, he did it with Dunkirk too. Like th- this is mm-hmm. him being himself and being good with it. So I was like, all right, mm-hmm. this is good. Yeah. So. I have not seen Dunkirk, unfortunately. I have not, I've yet yeah. to see it. Well, I have it, so you oh. can borrow it. So okay. I cool. thought uh, I thought it was a very good movie. I didn't yeah. think it was one of his best, but you know we can discuss mm-hmm. that another day. But I'll let cool. you borrow it. So, cool. but yes, Tenet. Yep. We both get see Hail Marys. Great movie. Um, yeah, it gets four. Great movie. Go see it. And as always, thanks mm-hmm. for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Share yep. share about us. Turn on the bell. And uh, let's keep Ding. this community growing so we can. Yeah, we're having fun. Having fun talking about mm-hmm. movies yep. as normal dudes and pastors. Normal dudes. Yep. Yeah. All right, cool, everybody. Cool. We'll see y'all.